Hi, and welcome to episode two of the Leitrim GA podcast in association with Leitrim GA uh, here on finalwhistle.ie and leitrimdaily.com. I'm joined this week uh, by one of our panel. We introduced it to the to the group last week, and Aidan Rooney joins me this week. Aidan, you're very welcome to the show. Thank you, Reverend. Glad to be here. Now, you had the pleasure of being in Markovic Park yesterday, although given the weather conditions for the second half, I'm not sure it was that much of a pleasure. Um, let's maybe start by taking a look at the action from the game, and then we'll have a little chat about And we're underway, this clash is underway here for Leitrim and Sligo. And Sligo won the breaking ball. Keen Laddie gets the ball again. Niall Murphy, the full forward line, way out of his position at the minute. Goes in to Red Oak Murphy. Red Oak Murphy tries to turn his man. He looks, he's looking at the post, will he be shot at goal? He looks at the post, and that one looks good, and that's over the bar, first point of this match, and that's for Red Oak Murphy. The ball goes long, but it looks like Leitrim might win this one. It's caught very well, and a mark there from Dean Rin from Don Rin, he plays it in to the full forward line. That is Evan Sweeney, Evan Sweeney finds his man, it's Keith Byrne on the ball again. Keith Byrne bounces the ball, looks for the post, that one looks good again and that's over the bar, that's second point in concession for Keith Byrne. Don Rin, a well-known handballer as well, one in, one in All-Ireland as an underage player. That one off is unfavoured, uh, bad foot, and that one's gone over the bar. So like we'll see if they can go on the counter-attack and put the sides level once again. Niall Murphy uses his bad foot, then bounces it, then he goes to go across field to find uh, Keen Lally. Keen Lally catches that one. Could be a goal scoring chance here. Paul McNamara, a good save on this occasion by Benny Flynn. A glaring goal opportunity, but maybe the wrong player got it on the wrong occasion. This comes out to Mark Plunkett. Mark Plunkett, a talented footballer. Plays that one to uh, Rooney. Rooney looks at the post. That one looks good. That one's over the bar. Another point for Dara Rooney. Oshin Madden plays it in to Mark Plunkett. Mark Plunkett takes a solo, looks at the post. This one looks good. That one isn't good indeed. That one's over the bar from the Willem man. Peter Laffey, brought into procession. Comes out to David Quinn. David Quinn is foot tripped there accidentally. Ball is played in to Sean Carbine. Sean Carbine plays it inside to Keen Laddie. Is there a goal chance on here for Sligo? He's fired it over the bar and a point for Sligo there. That comes in to Evan Sweeney. Will Eamon Kilgallen deal with it? Look, the ball is broken and it comes out to Ryan Feely and Sligo can go on their counter attack. It comes eventually to Conor Griffin. A silly back of the head there. That could be deemed as a striking offence. Aidan Flynn, the guilty man on this occasion. It was probably more of a yellow card. No, it is a red card. And Leitrim are down to 14 men. Aidan Flynn getting his marching orders. That ball is kicked in long to Dara Rooney. That will come to Killy McGlone. A lovely pickup by uh, the Melvin Gales man. There's a goal scoring chance here for, uh, for McGlone. It's well saved by Amy Gallen. A great save there by the netminder. And that will result in a 45 uh, for Leitrim to go and go on an attack again once again. It comes to Nathan Rooney. Nathan Rooney uh, is well marshalled there. He will try and see what he can work on this one. It comes to Red Oak. Red Oak plays in it to Niall Murphy. A score, goal scoring opportunity maybe for Murphy. Murphy finds the back of the net. And we have the first goal of this match. And it comes from the Clare Strand Hill man, Niall Murphy. An excellent ball across and a super finish for goal for uh, Niall Murphy. So we'll see how uh, Leitrim go on this attack. It comes to Brune. Brune. Brune plays it to Byrne. Byrne. Byrne trying to make it something happen here for his side. It comes to Plunkett. Plunkett has plenty of time on his hands. He looks at the post. That is a fine score and another point for Plunkett. Benny Flynn in a bit of a rush to take this one. Will this be intercepted? Is it, this is a great chance for Sligo. It's intercepted by Keel Lally. He goes around the keeper and it's in the back of the net. That's a second goal for Sligo. 
this time Keen Lally and you would have to say that's curtains now for Leitrim you would have to say Sligo are going to come away with the victory here today Sligo having a lot of men behind the ball now at this stage they have the lead they've only one man in the opposition half that is Peter Nocton buys one man will this one go over that one looks good from Dolan that is over the bar from the Glen Carman or Hampton man it's a five point game now, but is it too late for Leitrim? They really need to work on them scores, they really need a goal if they're going to get anything out of this game. Long ball, caught expertly by Mikey Gordon, a dual player last year, he won a, he won a league title for Sligo in Hurling against Leitrim actually, but he's just focusing on football this season. Peter Nocton plays it to Paddy O'Connor, to Nathan Mullen. To Nathan Rooney. Can this be a score here for uh, Peter Nocton? And Peter Nocton will get his first point in the Sligo jersey. A point for Sligo to leave it 218 to 18 points. Uh, you, of course, had a foot in both camps. Well, you've your one foot in one camp and maybe a toe in, in the other camp with your son Nathan, who came on for, for Sligo, was involved in a couple of their scores later on. A disappointing result in the end, seven point defeat to, to Sligo at the first round of the league? Uh, it was, yeah. Like at the end of the day, I suppose, going into the game, Breffney, you know, we were all talking about, um, you know, I suppose Leitrim from last season and expecting that Leitrim to come out this season. And I kind of the general feeling consensus was that if Leitrim kind of played to their potential or sorry last year's potential that they would probably overpower Sligo you know in the sense that Sligo was such a young team out and basically were working from a clean slate from Tony McEntee's point of view so like my own feeling before the game was that you know although I was torn a little bit I suppose from the from the, from the emotive side of it you know I did feel that Leitrim were favourites going into the game you know genuinely because I thought that Leitrim's experience in Division 3 of the season, their performances last year, you know, I suppose in adverse conditions, I suppose, you know, with COVID and everything else, I thought the performance levels were quite good. The Mayo performance was a decent performance in championship football, although in the winter time. So everything leading into this, um, but the one uh, variable we didn't know was, you know, I suppose how much work the teams had done in the in the in the lockdown period, and and that's very hard to quantify, Breffney. You know, um, being involved with the senior club team at the moment. And seeing them coming back on the pitch at the moment and how they're behaving and how they're how they're you know the county scene was kind of something similar, you know, guys on programs in isolation, all that kind of stuff that was coming into play and very much looking at the games that happened over over the over the weekend before in the hurling and you know even even this weekend's football games there were some major gaps in teams you know that you wouldn't expect I suppose notably Kerry and Galway for one but some notable gaps you know Mayo on down the same you know you wouldn't expect that type of gap generally in league football so going into the game I suppose you know there was a few well there's plenty of variables um, but I would have expected Leitrim you know to probably to hold Sligo out. Um, you know, with the with their power running game and all that kind of stuff, but I suppose that's not the way it unfolded on the day. Yeah, um, I suppose uh, some some of the talking points, I suppose, of the game from a Leitrim point of view, uh, having looked like we were in the ascendancy in the first half, that sending off just before the interval just seemed to turn the momentum completely, and Leitrim never really recovered from that. Well, I've 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 watched some commentary today on social media in relation to that, you know, and I suppose there is fair commentary to say that a player being sent off shouldn't have an outcome on a game where you're competitive in the game, you know? So I suppose uh, Gaden Flynn sending off, it was a correct decision, you know, looking at it back afterwards. Um, very disappointing for Aidan Flynn, but more importantly, at that time in the game, I think Leitrim were commanding a three-point lead over Sligo for most of the first half. They were, they get a three-point lead, Sligo would close it back to a point, Leitrim would open up to three points again. It was that kind of a game, which was very, very fluid from end to end, 23 scores in the first half, you know, but and at the end of the day, Sligo got the last two scores before half time. You know, they put Leitrim on the back foot. The sending off happened. So all those variables, along with the conditions changing at half time, um, made for a different second half. You know, we were very excited in the first half, as it was in the commentary box, looking at the game. It was an electric game. It was super football to watch from an entertainment point of view. Um, maybe both managers mightn't have been overly happy with the defensive um, setups as regards, you know, a lot of scores, a lot of scores from play, which is which is which is very very pleasing. But the point being that Leitrim probably, 
Um, should have gone in half time, possibly three, four points up with the cushion of the light breeze behind them. There was a breeze in the game. Leitrim had it. And then conditions all changed. I know Aidan Flynn sent off two late points for Sligo in the first half. You know, plus the rain came um, and changed the dynamic of the game. The dry ball changed to a wet ball and the wind decreased as the rain came. So all the advantages Leitrim had had, you know, in, in the first half kind of, you know, were kind of washed away and it became a very kind of... Um, I suppose, even playing field in the second half. A couple of minutes of brilliance from Benny Flynn in the first half. One phenomenal save, and then, I suppose, a minute of madness in the second that led to, to Sligo's second goal. And that was really, I suppose, the, the final nail in the coffin in terms of the, the competitiveness of the game. It was, but I, I think, looking at the game, you know, from our perspective, I think at that stage, Sligo had the ascendancy in the game. You know, they were well on top. They were running from deep. They had the extra man. You know, Leitrim were kind of running into a brick wall in the the attack. They were looking for sparks of brilliance from one or two players to get their scores. You know, it didn't look like Leitrim were creating scores easily, and they weren't. Um, at that stage of the game, Sligo were very effective, and they were creating scores easily. But I think the goal before that actually had taken the wind out of the sails because Sligo had the ascendancy. They were a point ahead. The goal put them four ahead. I think that at that stage, you could see you know, visibly in the ground. I know there was nobody there, but you could feel the air coming out of the game at that stage. And Keane Lally's goal then was probably the icing on the cake from a Sligo point of view. You know, a poor mistake from, from Brendan Flynn, absolutely. But I think at that stage, to be fair to him, um, the game was gone, you know, from our perspective. We didn't see any way, particularly we kept talking, I suppose, about the Ryan O'Rourke influence and the possible influence of Ryan in the game if he had played or committed the game. But it looked more and more obvious as the second half went on that Ryan wasn't going to take part in the game. You know, we were watching the bench closely. Um, and I suppose maybe that was a trigger that maybe Terry might have been able to play that card and give themselves something to, to bite onto. Maybe at the four points down where you still have something to play for. But I think, yeah, the last goal did finish the game off from a contest point of view, but I think the game was over before that. Yeah, I think it's also fair to say that, uh, like I mentioned, he had kept us in the game in the first half with a couple of... of, uh, of Fantastic saves. It's very easy to kind of point fingers at a goalkeeper. A mistake at that. Man, absolutely, absolutely Bert. I, I wouldn't say at all. Like it was a collective Leitrim, Leitrim um, poor performance. You know, overall there were some sparkling displays from a couple of individuals. Absolutely, and the first half in particular. But in the second half, as a team, Leitrim didn't perform. And that's to be fair. What Terry has brought to this, he's brought. You know, he's brought a massive team ethos and work rate, and that just didn't seem to be there in the same way that it was in the last couple of seasons during the game. You know, Leitrim didn't find that. Paddy Maguire made a couple of very isolated long runs up the field, I suppose, to take Nell Murphy out of the full forward line primarily. Um, but there was very little um, scoring chances created from those runs. You, you know, he didn't seem to have support off his shoulder where the last couple of seasons, that's been part and parcel of the Leitrim performance where the support was coming in waves. You know, there was a hunger and all that kind of stuff. So I suppose that brought into question about the energy levels Leitrim had in relation to the Sligo lads. The Sligo lads seem to have more energy, you know, they seem to have more in the tank going forward. Now, I know that you'll trade it off against the player sent off, and there's certainly merit in that, but I don't know, ultimately, um, is that, you know, Leitrim were still ahead at that stage. You know, they were still ahead. They could manage the game a little bit better, I suppose. Um, they would have felt they could manage the game a little bit better, but as it transpired, they, they, they weren't able to. Yeah, well, listen, maybe it's time to have a chat with one of those lads on that team. And we're going to get joined by Dara Rooney, one of the Leitrim's attackers on the day. Now, Aidan, you wouldn't have any need for this, but of course, Leitrim GA at the moment are running a win a wedding promotion. Uh, 150 <laughs> guests in Lochrain Estate and Gardens, uh, the beautiful sound, surroundings there on the shores of Lochrain, near Mull in County Leitrim. Of course, 25,000 euro value overall. Fantastic prize. Tickets, 25 euros, available on win a wedding. Dot .ie nice one for brownie points for the fiance uh, he, him him or her we're equal opportunities employers here in uh, Leitrim GA so whoever your partner is might be quite happy to get a little reminder of, of what's possible if you're planning a wedding and I think you can use it up to start at 2025 so even if you're single there's hope for you yet uh, one person we'll have to check and see whether he's in in the mood for a, a wedding or not uh, is Dara Rooney Dara any need for a wedding in your life uh, not at the moment, no. <laughs> no comments, says you. Um, no. I suppose before we start the conversation, we're going to have a little chat about the, the football match yesterday in Markovitz Park. Uh, we want to watch the highlights, but before that, I just want to make sure there's no um, contact between yourself and Aidan. I know one Melvin Gills man has moved in to play for him in St. Mary's this year. Uh, I get strung up by the clubs if, 
if I'd seen we put people in touch with each other so there'd be no physical contact. Keep your two meters uh, distance, boys, right? Yeah, we'll do. Come on, Brefney. So, Dara, uh, disappointing way for it kind of to peter out at the end there, but uh, we've already heard some of Aiden's thoughts earlier in the show. Your own opinion, uh, I suppose, simple question, what happened? What, what, what next for Leitrim? Um, in terms of the game, I think it was tight in the first half. I felt like we were comfortable enough coming up to half time, and then obviously the red card killed us both mentally, I think, and even the way we were set up in the second half, we came out and we just didn't show up for the first 15 minutes. And that's where we lost the game, really. I think Sligo did well. They used the extra man well in defence. We couldn't, they slowed us down every time we tried to, if we broke them down in our defence, our transition up the pitch, it just wasn't happening because they were giving away frees, pulling, you know, doing the cute things that they, they were supposed to be doing. And it worked for them in the end. And where to next? I will train on Wednesday. We had a word between players, you know, just after the game. I suppose coming into the league campaign, I was always thinking, you know, we were going to beat everyone, get to a semi-final, get to a final. So I suppose it's just a minor inconvenience in the grander scheme of things. Get the win against Loud, get the win against Antrim, make the semis. Still the same plan. Yeah, would you feel, Dara? I, I know yesterday, I suppose, I, I watched the game and the first half... Was 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 super. It was brilliant football from a point of view of um, entertainment value. Like there was it was twelve eleven and it was scores. You know both ends of the pitch coming frequently. I suppose defensively, maybe you'd look at it and say like neither team defended well. You know the forwards were very good on both sides, and you know there was five scores in the Leitrim forward line and there was six scores in the Sligo forward line. And it was a very effective performance from both forward lines. Would would Terry have been happy enough with that? You know with it, or, or was he disappointed with the with the defensive side of the game? Yeah, well, of course, he's going to be disappointed with the defensive side. Like, I thought in the forward line, you know, we were on fire. Myself, Keith Byrne, Evan, we all popped up scores. We were playing well. But I think we were just very loose in defence. I think we were all kind of bombing forward. And then both teams, like Sligo were hitting long kickouts. We were hitting long kickouts. And if it just wherever it broke, whatever team got it, they were nearly scored straight from, it was just score after score. And it was poor now from both teams. Defensively, we'll have to look at ourselves and try and set up more, maybe implement the sweeper a bit better for next week. Yeah, against suppose, yeah Jack Lahini, I suppose, played the sweeper role in the first half, and, you know, it kind of was a traditional role for Shane Quinn, you know, so I suppose the question that I'd be asking is, you know, has has have those roles kind of changed or have they evolved? I know you're only back a few weeks training and it's very hard. I know you're the game against Fermanagh. It's very hard to kind of, you know, get things back on track, you know, but I would have felt good into the game that Leitrim probably had the more stable system. You know, Sligo were coming out new and fresh, um, under Tony, and you know, you 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 had a stable system um, in the Leitrim setup, and I suppose yesterday I was expecting Leitrim to kind of come at Sligo in waves, and that didn't seem to happen. You know, Paddy was coming probably on his own in isolation a lot of the time out of the full back line, and I kind of maybe felt that way from watching the game that maybe Leitrim weren't at the same pitch that they were before, you know, last year, say or whatever. Is, is there that sense around the place that maybe you know that you kind of let it slip yesterday, and that you have to kind of get get back to work? Yeah, I think so. It was definitely back to the drawing board. I think in regards just to sweeper, like Jack Lahini has done that role before, so it was nothing really new for him. There might have been a bit of confusion at the start of the game because Mark Dunkett was obviously, he was kind of playing centre-back, but he was given the free roam yeah. to go forward and then Jack would hold the centre-back position yeah, yeah. when yeah. Mark was up there. So maybe there was a bit of confusion there in the first half. And then just in regards going forward, I suppose like as a defender, your main job is to defend and you don't want to commit everyone forward to like Paddy's been doing that, you know, his whole life. He's one of the best in the country at it. And I think just the rest of the lads were maybe a bit too focused on defending and weren't, mm -hmm. you know, expressing themselves enough going forward. And they were, maybe the first game of the season, they were probably a bit afraid to go forward and leave the gaps in the back when they should have been bombing forward and helping out the attack. It kind of looked that way, I suppose, like, you know, having been around all the Leitrim games in the last couple of years, and seeing the way the team, the fervor of the team played, they literally smothered teams in the last couple of seasons. You know, they would have smothered them as regards their intensity, you know, dropping in their 10 and 12 or, you know, just bringing back that volume of player. You know, it didn't seem to happen the same way yesterday, the same intensity. And I suppose, you know, there was always a question going to be how teams were coming back in, Dara, you know, as regards their fitness levels, not so much the fitness levels, but the intensity levels and, you know, how much work was done in a way. It just looked, it looked yesterday as the game went on. I know the sending off was probably, you said, a mental 
thing more than a physical thing in the sense that you know it might have sapped you mentally more than physically. But it just looks as the game went on that Sligo were finding it easier to find their legs in the game. You know, Leitrim seemed to be you know more late, and you were getting less chances up front. You weren't getting as much team ball into you. It was becoming harder and harder to get get that ball fluidly into you. Where the first half, the ball was going much earlier, you know, into good pockets, and you were getting on the ball much earlier. So, I think what, was there an energy level thing in this in the second half with Leitrim? Um, I think there was a bit of fatigue. All right, you have to remember though, like when there is when we are a man down, every player has to work that bit extra. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you're yeah. doing the extra little bit of mileage compared to where the Sligo lads. Like we would have to, as a forward line, we'd have to go back and help out the defence every single time. Whereas the Sligo lads, you know, they can take the odd break. And then I suppose whenever we did turn over, it was tough for the likes of me, Keith Byrne, Evan, whoever was in the forward line, to make that sprint back up and get back in position. So I think definitely fatigue was a factor in the second half, but it had something definitely something to do with the red card. Darry, you talked about the, the players having a, a conflab after the game and having a little chat. Obviously, you're not going to share the full details of that with us, but what can you tell us about kind of the mood of that and so anything that's come out of that that as a group you've decided to work on over the next week or two? Um well yeah, there was there was no real tactics, it was just kind of our attitude and how we performed in the last or the 15 minutes after the at the start of the second half. We just felt like we didn't, you know, do ourselves any justice. Like the heads went down, as I was saying, the mental like aftermath of the right card, the heads definitely went down. We can't afford to be doing that. Like we kind of realized before the second goal went in, we'll say the Sligo second goal, like we were catching them. We felt like we had the momentum. We we're going to get them. And then that was just a killer. It was just kind of classic leech from mistakes. You know, when you're finally getting a bit of momentum, doing just silly things and just not taking our chances as well. Like we did a few goal chances that we didn't take where Sligo took theirs and goals win games at the end of the day. Yeah, so uh, Eamon, Eamon Kigallan made one fantastic save in the second half. I think I think it had a, it, it had a really, really big impact on the game. You know, I think at that stage, mm-hmm. Leitrim had scored the goal. You know, I suppose Sligo got momentum, you're right, in the 50 minutes after half time. But look, I suppose, Dara, we've talked a lot of the negativity of, of, of losing the game. Um, yeah, but from the positive side, you know, Sligo have to travel twice now. You know, Leitrim are home next weekend against Loud. So you're right in what you say. The, the roles could be reversed very quickly next weekend. You know, it's like we have to go to Antrim and try and get a performance again and win on the road, which is going to be difficult, you know, against McGinley's outfit. And you have Loud at home in Carrick, and we were all down at the Loud game away the last time you played, where you were dominant. So, like, there's definitely, I know there's Mickey Hart factor, but from, from our perspective as supporters and watching the performance, I think you're right. I think, you know, from our perspective outside, if the attitude is still good in the group, and there's still a togetherness and there's still a momentum. Like, absolutely, the whole thing can turn on its head next weekend and then make the last weekend then, you know, fully championship fair. The two winners take take the spoils. And that's the way I would see next weekend from a supporter's perspective and having known the kind of, um, you know, the, the the passion and the heart that's in the team and what, how they performed over the last, you know, three seasons, let's say, just the third season under Terry. So, you know, I'd be saying, I'd be looking at the glass always half full still, you know, and I and obviously you are as players, 100 percent I suppose with the realizing the realization of taking the good stuff and the bad stuff out of the game you know yesterday like there was fantastic positives like 18 points is a is a huge score to put up in a game you know and a lot of quality scores like a lot of quality scores got from long range and I know same what we said for Sligo but the point is that if we can capitalize on that next week and get our defensive you know shape you know more solid and more what it what it was you know, I know Aidan Flynn's a loss now next weekend, but, you, you know, I would be very, very hopeful that we can get a performance and get a win next weekend. Yeah, definitely. That's our thinking as a camp as well. Like, you know, as I said, it's just a minor inconvenience. The road to Division 3 is still well and truly up for grabs. If we get our win next week, you know, we'll have momentum then going into the Antrim game. It might come down to score difference, but as you said, 18 points. To lose and score 18 points, that is a massive positive to take from the game. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of, I suppose, the overall picture of a, of the year ahead, it's been a long six months or so since uh, Leitrim were, were out last in, in the championship against Mayo. How nice is it just to be back playing football again uh, with a view to playing a, a decent club season and an county season over the next couple of months? Yeah, of course. Like, I think everyone's the same. Players, supporters, everyone's just been mad for it to start back. You know, you're 
we're doing our runs kind of up here on our own in I, i'm in dublin now so i was kind of doing my own runs and doing your own gym work it's fairly monotonous like it was just it was getting sick and you're kind of wondering when if we were going to get back at all and when you got the date then everyone was buzzing i remember the first training back so it was like it was like a championship training like running up to a championship final everyone was just buzzing and nearly every training has been like that since the quality of training this year from the group has been very good now I know it's we obviously got the, the loss there against LIGO, but we definitely feel that we'd be confident of still getting to a final and making Division 3. I was going to be very politically incorrect there, Darren, say if you'd met up with a couple of certain Dublin players, you could have traded away in Dublin, but and you wouldn't have been lost. <laughs> I know, yeah. We should have been out looking back. <laughs> well, listen, 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 Darren, thanks a million for joining us. Hard luck uh, on the results over the weekend. And I suppose we'll be keeping an eye with interest over the coming weeks and months as the season progresses. Uh, up to that uh, championship match against Mayo or Sligo in a couple of weeks' time. And you never know, stranger things have happened. We could be uh, facing a, a return against Sligo in Park Sean in a couple of months. Uh, stranger things I don't have happened. I don't think I need text. Are we taking any text, Dara, from Nathan Rooney for this week? Let it, let it ride. I right, love them all. <laughs> Thanks a minute, Dara. No worries. See you later. Thank you, Dara. Chat to you soon. Chat to you soon. Mind yourself. Now, of course, while the footballers were in action in Markovic Park, it was left to the hurlers to keep the home fires burning. And Park Sean McDermott, yesterday afternoon, uh, David McGovern led his hurling side into their first game of the National Hurling League Division 3B. And of course, loud in opposition. It wasn't to be uh, a great day for Leitrim, beating the last puck of the ball uh, by a single point. David, welcome to the programme. Thanks very much, Bethany. Delighted to be here. Well, first of all, we better address the elephant in the room, which is, of course, before we get on to the, the football or the hurling, should I say, is uh, that accent, that doesn't sound like a, a Leitrim accent. What's the origins and how did you end up in the, the Leitrim jerseys? That's a very, very South Leitrim accent, I think. Um, it sort of changes. It used to, it used to go back and forth when I was younger now, in fairness. I used to spend the summers down, so I used to be coming back to Blanche with a fairly thick uh, Leitrim accent at times. Um, no, me both parents are from Leitrim. Um, I've been going down since I was a young fella. Um, parents are both both from both sides of Mohill and uh, from farming background, so I suppose I was always, um, always loved to get down, mess around on the farm with the horses and bits and pieces, so... I've been going down there a long time, so that's where that's where it stems. Of course, now you play your trade with Peregrines up in Dublin, uh, where obviously your your home club. Uh, what made you choose Leitrim? Was it the opportunity to play national hurling league? Oh, it was the celebrity status, Bethany, and everything that goes with it. The women and the money. Um, I, I know. Thought I, Jack, suppose, I, I thought Jack Moradi had um, had a car planch on that. <laughs> well, Moradi actually has that. <laughs> Moradi has that sewn up now. Fair play to him. But um, I know. I suppose. Um, I suppose it's something myself. I wouldn't really talk about too much, but something I'm always sort of proud of. I always consider myself a Leitrim um fella, even though I didn't grow up in Leitrim. Never, never supported the Dubs. Um, always had a Leitrim jersey when I was young. Always went down to watch Leitrim footballers play. So I suppose they always carry that. And I suppose there, there is there is a lot of dubs probably similar to me for, with parents from uh, country backgrounds, and it goes either way sometimes. But I always sort of kept the the Leitrim link, so um, it was something I was always really proud of, and still am. So what you're saying is it's all his fault then? It's all that man's fault kicking kicking balls in '94 and that sort of stuff. <laughs> that's where the that's 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 where it started for us. Like, and I suppose we we would have then went down. I suppose maybe just after a few years after '94. Um, myself, my father, and my uncle, we 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 would have went out to every championship game. So would have been really, really big fans. We'd be getting up at six six o'clock in the morning, getting the train down wherever it was, Galway, Mayo, Leitrim. So was, we had some really, really good days. And I, I'd be reminding people that of, of the football back then in the early nineties and the late nineties. Like and there were some great, great games. Like and great, great teams. There was remember there was a Mayo game in Carrick and Shannon, but they were very lucky to get out Mayo. I think bet Leitrim by a point and stuff like this. And then it's you know back then it was your year over, like you know as well. So it was. Really fine margins. Well, I suppose it was finest margins ever yesterday in uh, Park Sean. Tell us about the, I suppose, the game from your point of view. Uh, actually, before you do that, let's take a look at the actual action from the game. Here's the highlights. You might even recognise the commentary. Myself and Kevin Glancy on commentary duty here. Oh, very good. A great man. 
Cleveland. He has opened the scoring here today uh, as that puck out goes straight to Paddy Lynch um, at the wing forward for Loud as it's David Kettle breaking through on goal here. Uh, he's under pressure from Kean Mallon but managed to get his effort towards the goal but unfortunately to the right and wide. Michael Bryan's quick kick out is picked up on the left hand side. Uh, I can't make out which player. Carl Donovan again. Carl Donovan again. He seems to have been everywhere. Good strike. Great strike. And that's a phenomenal score. That's more like it from Leitrim as, as they cut the deficit to just two points. The long ball comes in and it's into a, it's fallen nicely to Paddy Lynch and what a save and it's a great save from the goalkeeper. Mm. Michael O'Brien earned his keep there. I know we're well used to yellows and reds been flashed on Leitrim players and there's a few who, who see more of them than most but uh, can that be a problem when you're picking up kind of scrappy yellow cards like that and they, you get caught later on with a, maybe losing the player as Phelan yeah. Joyce gets the ball and he comes in takes a shot goalkeeper another fine save from the goalkeeper but the ball comes back to Joyce he gets a touch but can't direct it goalwards it's back out to D David Kettle and his effort goes wide great goal chance another fabulous save from O'Brien um, Loud really should have scored yeah but uh, like you said Refn, a great save by Michael O'Brien not only the first time but the second time as well he had to scoop it back you know, so a sort of a double save there in the one movement. This this guy Brian Keown, he's a Galway referee. Bit of history with one of our lads, Liam Morton. He actually sent Liam off in a, the kind of club championship game in Markovitz Park two years ago uh, for, for two yellows. So Brian Keown, he's familiar with a lot of the Leitrim team here today by virtue of that game. With oh, would that be a, would that be a small club of referees who've sent off uh, Liam Morton? <laughs> Rare is it? I think he might not. It might not just be a minority of one in terms of the referee for turning. That is some score. And again, Darren Gagan has shown it. He doesn't care where the ball is on the pitch or where the free is. He's going to have a crack. And the goalkeeper Michael O'Brien's a long way from goal, but he's going to punt this down to the far end of the pitch. Colin Morton preparing for it, but no no contest there at all from the Leitrim forwards as the. As Gagan collects the pass, but a loose stray ball from him, James Rooney's on it, and he will have a pop of goal. No, he won't. He'll take the ball back and give it to Gavin O'Hagan and his teammate in Cluny and Munch. I think they're actually related. Uh, the Rooney's and the O'Hagan's are uh, all in the one family there. And oh, it's a goal on Colin Morton. He mightn't have contested the last one, but there's absolutely no nothing. All oh, the referees going in for a little conversation here with the with the umpire. Yeah, he's going to raise the green flag. The green flag's gone up, and Leitrim are back in the game. Yeah, so now we make our way down towards the, the right-hand side of the field, and a good puck out there, and it's well won by. I suppose it's coming back to the Leitrim man actually in the end a bit scrappy but possession on the less Carl McDermott on possession in midfield a bit of a sliced one but he's found his teammate and it Liam. is yep fantastic from Liam Morton and he's into Colum. the brother column one hand catch and yes. another fantastic goal Morton a second goal from that combination of brother feeding brother we were just talking about family dynasties here and, and they're one of the ones over the last five or six years really have co come into their own in the in Leitrim Hurling but a uh, really good quarter from Leitrim they really down the marker and hopefully now they can drive on you know the f first five minutes of this quarter is going to be crucial if we can uh, maintain our lead and maybe even add to it if we can yeah I'm just doing my uh, process of elimination here 22 is already on for loud uh, Thomas McCreesh we've mentioned him a few times in the play so it must be oh that's a great catch and dangerous and oh great block there from McGovern but it comes back and it's a goal even though it comes through the net it's a very obviously a goal uh, the ball does Paul Matthews yeah fantastic score there Paul Matthews 1-2 for the day for him from a decent bit out he's almost on the halfway line just under the, the stand here in Park Sean McDermott and he strikes it nicely uh, and again it looks great like score. it's a great score drops right over the crossbar everything, distance, range, the whole lot accuracy and it's uh, one point between the sides here yeah, I think I think Leitrim now should 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 press on here. Huey has it now. Just let it up to the forward, Huey. Let it up to them. Good play. Good fought, play by Leitrim. Nice and controlled. The teammate in there to James Agnabola. Where's the time? And it looks for Colin Morton on the outside of the... Oh, oh, lovely play by Liam Morton. Oh, Liam Morton has, has switched in with his brother. That's a great That's score a great from Liam score Morton. By Liam. So anything you can do, I can do better. He's going to have that conversation at home. But Liam Morton, he started the game at centre-back. He's at put Leitrim one point up at the moment. Two, and he is. Turned it's over. Evan Marr who breaks free with it from, but he's hooked and now it falls to Ryan Walsh he, did, he makes no mistake this time and that's 
Well done. I think it's Paul Early there again, is it? Could get a free yeah, then. Yeah, very well again there, Paul Early. And Paul Lanahan. Two of them. Oh, there's a few. Uh, oh, Paul Lanahan is senseless what he's doing here. Yeah, I don't know, did he touch a man's face guard? If he yeah. did, he's in bother. Yeah, no, it's, the rules are clear. He touched the face guard, it's a red card. And the linesman is assisting the referee here now, so Paul Lanahan, I'm afraid, is going to be in trouble here. And again, the silly part about it was there was no need for it. Yeah, and also we Paul had Matthews the one. been called in as well. So the two men in discussions, yellow card for one, yellow. Matthews, and, and a red. Yeah, red for Paul. Yeah, it's a tough, tough break, particularly given the, the nature and a reversal of the free, which yeah, is, is nearly a bigger, a bigger punishment at this stage. And everyone's looking at the referee now to see how long he will add on in this situation before it breaks to Loud, and Loud could seal this with a, a long-range effort now. Oh, and he gets lucky. Phelan Joyce gets lucky, but and there's the one person you don't want on the ball as he puts it straight over the bar. And that is a point for Loud. It's a disappointing way to end the game uh, as the referee blows the final whistle here. David, disappointing way to, to start the, the league season? Yeah, very fr- frustrating. Um, I suppose reflecting on it today, um, we were all geared up. Uh, we thought we were going to win yesterday. And I suppose... It, it just shows, I suppose, the, the competition that it is today. It's There's there's nearly no second chance within the league. It's only a few games, only three games, only four teams in the league. Like so, um, And with the, with the other result being a draw, I think it makes it really, really difficult for us. Um, you're really relying on results to go your way. So we we're very disappointed after yesterday. We had two challenge games uh, the week before against Longford and Monaghan. We were very rusty against Longford. And we come on a lot against Monaghan on the Sunday. And um, we thought we were going... We were going really well, but we know we, we left it behind us yesterday. We missed a few chances and we just didn't click 100%, but uh, really, really frustrated because we, we felt that was a league that could be won this year. Yeah, it's probably, it's probably not gone, David, at the moment, I'd say, but from the point of view of the performance, like where would you see yourselves now with the next couple of games? You know, the more than the footballers, you're in the kind of the same demise now. You know, you you, you, you have no trapdoor now. You have to go out and, and win, the, win the next two games. So from the Kevin Fermanagh perspective, you know, the, the division is very tight. You know, I don't see why, you know, you wouldn't win them. And the draw yesterday, kind of, if you win both games, it kind of becomes their problem rather than your problem. Yeah, well, I think it's, I think it's still within, it's it's within Loud's hands. So obviously, if Loud wins their last couple of games, they win. We're obviously hoping for results, but no, we'll be going out 100% uh, to win, to win both games. And, and, and hopefully, one of the other teams can do us a favour. Um, if it comes down head to head, then uh, I think it'd be difficult with 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 loud. But um, if three teams finished on the same points, which I think makes it hard with the draw yesterday. But now we'll be going out. We've we've a huge panel. We've really, really, really strong. And um, we've six new lads. I think I think it's six new lads into the team this year, and they can all hurl, which is really, really good. You need the lads coming through every year. A couple of lads coming through, so it's big to have six lads coming through. So it's I suppose it's bedding lads into the team and lads finding positions and it all takes time we, we've been on our zooms uh, throughout the winter which was really good but you need to be on the pitch you need to be working together you need to be hurling together to know how everyone's playing and how everyone's going together so i think we've only had the three or four weeks which every other team has in fairness but um yeah we just feel if we had even we'd love i'd love to play them tonight i'd love to play the game over or if we had the game next week i feel like we'd we could win by seven or eight points but that's yeah. the way how do you how, we, do you how do you feel how do you think, David, the lockdown has gone for you as regards, you know, I, I just talking to Brett earlier on there about, you know, the footballers and, you know, the difficulty. And I've seen it down here even, even in, in the in, in the club scene. You know, how do you feel it went for the hurlers as regards, you know, the, the contact and the Zoom and, you know, the tracking of the fitness stuff? And how do you feel that went? Like, do you feel that that was up to what you would have expected or was it more difficult to keep track of it? I think it was funny. I think uh, I think the way things happened, I suppose, we had new management that came in um, in December 2019 so like just before say COVID had started and we, we, we were playing the league and we were going really well in the league and we got to um league final and we were we were due to play league final against Sligo on the Sunday and I think then on the Thursday was when the games were all called off and then we were you know right, in no man's land and stuff so we were going really well and we fully expect as we always do is going to every match like we're going to win but we fully expected to beat Sligo we played them in in, in a really really tough uh, league game and, and lost me two points and we felt like we'd co- come on an awful lot from that game so um, the lockdown then yeah we were training we were putting in our plans I suppose at the start we were throwing in our runs on the WhatsApp I'd say it was what, what every team in the country was doing but yeah. um, you know some lads done really well out of it in fairness some lads you know concentrated on other lads you know likes the 
you know, likes a bit of contact, likes likes a bit of crack. I love training in groups. Like it's something I've, I've really yeah, noticed yeah. about myself, even if it's in even in a small group, it's something I really, really um value now. And I suppose when you're when you're playing all the time, I'm, I'm going a lot a good a good while now playing both. I play a bit of football when I can with the club and play hurling, and it's 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 something you probably take for granted, like even just a bit of crack going down. So yeah, and all realised now this week, you know, would have found the club, you know, coming back in. You know, the intensity was way above what they were doing on their own. Although they were working very hard on their on their own, you know, they found when they came back into the group session that the intensity was up. Did you lose any people's injuries over the last couple of weeks? Was there any injury <laughs> issues or? There was a few injuries, yeah, but you're 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 dead right. Like that's the nail on the head. Like it's a different game. You can go out and do your sprints on your own. You can do your runs on your own. I'll never push myself as much on my own as even if I've one other lad with me, I'll run a bit faster. But um, it's it's the drills, it's the thirty seconds tackling, it's that sort of stuff. That's the fitness. I get. I think I get me mostly fitness out of challenge games, and out of games when you're up against it, when you have to sprint, when you've no other option, um, but to go. But um, yeah, no, we have had a few injuries over the last um couple of weeks lads and that's very frustrating as well lads just back and then they're out injured like so it's very it's very hard on them um we had um Aaron McDermott I think uh, Martin Feeney as well hurt himself yesterday so I don't really know how they are but we had had a few injuries leading into it which which doesn't help but again it's it's the same I suppose every every team in the country there's probably going to be hamstrings gone and all this sort of crack now over the next while in terms of the game yesterday though I suppose just before we let you go we're kind of running out of time here is actually the yep. The actual the major talking points, the two goals in the first in the second half for Leitrim, uh, very similar. Liam Morton puts the ball in, Collie gets on the end of it and flicks one in and, and catches one and buries it. Um, it was a really nice momentum shift for Leitrim. Uh, and, and it looked like Leitrim were going to push on from there, but it just didn't quite work out. Injury time, maybe we might even talk about that. The goals kind of speak for themselves. Injury time, a point up, in control, we win a defensive free, and then it all just kind of goes wrong really yeah and i think i think them things happen you mentioned collie and liam like as well like the boys were working well together like i think if anything we probably could have got a few more balls into collie like he might he might have done a bit more damage but um there was a bit of controversy going around around whether we were a point up or a point down or was it level and were we bringing a man back or what was going on so um there was there was all that sort of stuff but it's good you know that's the exciting part of the game that's the part you love like the last couple of minutes you're 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 out there and you're making you're making decisions and things happen and things happen in the heat of the moment as well. Like and um the one thing I'll say about the lads is they're they're always really committed and anyone who's come to watch us over the last few years will know like they, they love coming to see the games because it's always great crack because lads will always put put in a shift. They'll always they'll never 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 ever lie down. Really, really tough that way. So and it, I think we just pro- possibly ran out a little bit of steam and a little bit of sharpness the last couple of minutes, which was very frustrating because I felt after the second goal we should have pushed on. And in my head we were going to win by by six or seven, like if if we did. And I think we were well capable of it. But um, they're the regrets we'll have now. But it's onwards and upwards. We'll keep our late and hopefully, hopefully get stuck into Fermanagh now the weekend and then Cavan two weeks later. Who knows, maybe Lowe again in the Nicky Record Cup later yeah. in the summer. David, thanks very much. Hard luck yesterday, particularly the manner in which it happened in the last book of the game. Uh, but thanks for joining us, and we'll be catching up with you again later through the year. Thanks very much, Breffany, and good, good, good to chat. Good to chat you, thanks, David. Aiden. Good to chat you. Very much. you soon. See you later, lads. Thank you. Bye-bye. Now, of course, it's not just the boys that get all the fun of getting back out on the playing pitches in the month of May this year. The women also get their opportunity to get the little ladies football league up and running on Sunday and they host Loud. We're getting very familiar with Loud this year. All three teams in action against Loud in their league campaigns this year. But their manager, Hugh Donnelly, joins us now to chat about his side's chances in this year's league campaign. Hugh, you're very welcome to the programme. Cheers, lads. Thanks for having me. Uh, very happy to have you. Um, you've Loud in Ballinamore at 2pm on Sunday afternoon. Um, it's been a while since we've seen the ladies out in action since the end of the championship last year. Uh, how are things going for you? How has the lockdown been and how are preparations for, for Sunday come along? Yeah, I, I can't complain, um, to be honest. We've learned uh, an awful lot from lockdown one. Um, and this has been a, a, a great experience in terms of, of you know what not to do um, in lockdown too. So, yeah, I, I can't complain. The girls have been, been working um, really, really hard. Um, and their own programs and doing their own things prior till um, we were allowed to get back and in, to collective training again. So honestly, yeah, things are we're, we're hitting the ground nicely, and um, yeah, we're really looking forward to next weekend. I suppose, Hugh, a question I'd have for you: 
you know, in the context of I, I'm managing a club team myself and talking to all the managers and players to date and what we've seen at the weekend's play in the football and the hurling last weekend, I suppose there's a bit of a very grey area at the moment as to how teams are going to come back on the pitch. You know, we've seen massive score lines in some of the football matches and the hurling matches. And, you know, how do you feel that the training has gone for the girls? Do you feel that, you know, it's very hard to put a finger on it. Are you happy enough from your own point of view that they've got, they've got enough of the work done themselves to be, to, to be fighting fit? Yeah, I have to 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 take my hat off to the girls. Uh, to be honest, they've been they've been absolutely brilliant. Um, they had they've done everything that they've been asked to do. They've come back in fantastic shape, fantastic shape, and 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 that um, each and every one of them deserves the credit for that. Uh, in terms of preparation, we've had two challenge games now, and um, things are are tipping along nicely. We have gradually um, got better over the two games, and and things are starting to click into place. So. Uh, overall, I'm I'm more than happy where we're at. I, I think we're we're just coming nicely now to to the Louth game. Obviously, we've um, they beat us last year in the league, and you know it's it's an opportunity now for us to to go out and, and rectify that result from last year because we didn't perform, and and that kind of um, so look, it's everything's um, heading nicely towards it, and, and we're looking forward to it. Good. And as regards the um, you know, the injuries and some of the lads. Teams, you know, would have had, you know, maybe issues with injuries coming back in into, into the group training environment where, you know, obviously the intensity goes way up when you're back in a group a group environment. You, have, you no injuries at the moment. You happy enough? Um, we have one or two soft tissue. Um, hopefully, um, I know more events tonight whether where everything will be cleared up. But yeah, we have, we have a few um, knocks and niggles, and we can three yesterday uh, unscathed. So. We're pretty much unscathed, bar bar a bit of uh, stiffness and soreness and, and the usual rough and tumble from from football. But no, um, as I say, we've we've one maybe concern uh, in terms of a hamstring injury. But outside of that, um, yeah, we're good to go. There's competition for places. The girls right. are hungry. Um, so yeah, it's 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 all guns uh, all guns to go on, on Sunday. In terms of the actual squad for the game on Sunday, I suppose um, people will be familiar with most of the players who featured last year for you. Any new additions into the team? Uh, that we might not have been uh, expecting. Um, we have we've brought in a, a few of the younger girls, a few girls who who um, I've seen quite a bit of over the the championship com- uh, campaign, the club campaign. Um, Rachel McIntyre being one, um, Abby Sweeney being another girl, and and, and Caroline uh, got in as well, a, a young keeper coming in. So we brought in a little bit of youth and. And you wouldn't believe what they've brought to the table in terms of just um it's like they're always been there, that they're they've fitted um really well and and uh yeah, it's it's nice to have a little bit of youth and it keeps the keeps the elder generation on their toes as well. So um yeah, it's 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 good to have them in. I suppose two names that we'd be well used to seeing on each of teams over the years. Uh, one featured last year, one didn't, and they're both playing in the Women's National League of Soccer at the moment. And Myrna Devaney's been lighting it up with Atlone Town while uh, Derville Burns top of the table with Piemont. Uh, any chance of seeing either of those two girls in the Leitrim jersey for the league or maybe later in the year for the championship? Uh, yeah, look, listen, uh, and credit to, to, to both of them. They've been in constant contact with me um, from the day dot, and, and I just made very aware of, of what they were um, planning to do and what what they wanted to do in terms of, of moving forward with with their their, their um, own sports. So um, at the end of the day, I suppose, especially with Marin in terms of her soccer, um, it's something that, that she's always wanted to do. And it's a, you know, anybody's dream and ambition to, to try and go on and represent um, their county. So in terms of, of Marin, you know, the communication skills have been been excellent and um, so I know exactly what she's training and uh, how often she's training so it goes across that that, that line of you know player born out and, and trying to to look after players to a certain degree I know the training load she's under so and, and likewise so it's um yeah look you know they they are still there on the panel and we'd like to, to hopefully see them at some stage um whether it be this Sunday or the following Sunday or whatever that they're still there and and my god that they're two fantastic players to to have there to, to bring in, in or, or to start or whatever the case may be. So it's great to have them girls there to um if and when we need them. Funny you I was in um I was in getting me a vaccination today and I, I met her father, Eamon. We'd be we'd be long long friends from, from way back when we were kids. 
Um, so I was talking to him about it actually, and I said, but very well, one thing, and I'm sure you know, Derby is the same. She has a burning ambition to play for her county. Um, you know, I, I know her since she was a small girl, and uh, you know, it's it's great to see, and I suppose it, it kind of puts it in context, you where we are in Leitrim, I suppose, at all at, at all levels of sport, like we can't afford our best athletes not playing for us, you know, and I, I'm sure you're you're seeing that as much as as any manager in any code, you know, in a county where you know, we don't have the massive resources and I mean, volume of players that other counties might have. So I do empathize with you. It's a, it's a tough situation, to, you know, to be in. And, you know, the girls I know, they, 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 they'd long to play for their county. So, you know, hopefully, hopefully you get, you get their assistance and their help as it goes through uh, to get your goals achieved. Yeah, look, it, it's from, from day dot, you know, one of the, the, the things that I try to bring into the squad this year was all about accountability. And, and you know, as long as players are, are doing look work for example or college or there's things in life yeah. that's going to crop up uh, and it's really important that we try and get the balance right and you know I, i've tried to make it very clear from the girls look you know catch up on your sessions do your sessions and um, throw them into the groups so that everybody sees that the sessions are being done and it's all ab- about accountability and as i said um you know both girls are, are blessed with an unreal talent uh, outside of gillick so it, it's it would be very unfair um you know of, of me and you know of, of later ga to try and, and force their hand so Look, I'm about long enough now to to realise that um, these girls have goals and ambitions and dreams and and you know to represent at the highest level. So as I said, um, I know exactly what they're doing and I, I know exactly in terms of, of how much they're doing. So there's no way that I'm going to uh, um, you know the girls come to training when they can in terms of even there to to stand and, and observe in terms of what we're doing so that when they do come back into the fold that that they're up to date with everything in terms of style of football and, and how we're setting up and things like that. So look, I, I, and the girls are aware as well. So that's the big thing. Um, so no, listen, I, I'm more than happy to, 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 um, to know where they're at at this particular time. So yeah. all's good. There's no doubt. Now, reading up your resume today, Hugh, um, and apologies for not knowing as much about you until I read it today, but you have a vast experience at this level. You've been around a lot of counties and you have a lot of work, work done. So I suppose in your point of view of Leitrim, where does it fit in? You know, from where you've been in, you know, Donegal, Cavan, and Tyrone to date, like, is it, is is it, is it comparable? Uh, I tell you one thing, and I genuinely mean this. In terms of 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 a bunch of girls who have bought into something, everything that they've been asked to do, they've done it um, to the best of their ability. They're the, a, a genuinely, uh, they're a great bunch of uh, uh, girls to work with, and there, there's hunger there. And I suppose. When you don't have that, and and you know the prop, there wasn't a proper structure in place for a number of years. Um, and I suppose when it's all new to these, you buy in, and, and once they see the results, like we had a fantastic run last year on, until COVID and and um, hit in, and we probably would have went up last year, and, and now we have another opportunity. And I suppose that's one thing about COVID, in in, in terms of of what it has brought to us, it's you know we just don't know what's around the corner. So it's a great opportunity now. The hunger's there for the girls. Um. But overall, they're a great bunch of colleagues to work with, and and um, look, they're hungry for success. And, and I'm just, I suppose, uh, my job is, is more of a a facilitator or, or a mentor in terms of of that, because when a team wants to to progress and a team wants to 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 move forward, then it makes my job a hell of a lot easier. So, um, yeah, no, listen, they're right up there in terms of of hunger, and desire, and and everything else, everything that you'd want from from a team when you're taking over them, you know. Hugh, great, you talked yeah. about yeah, Hugh, you talked about the um, I suppose that that motivation and that momentum that was built up ahead of the COVID screeching halts that came in March of last year, and I suppose the vibes have been great coming out of the clubs, the county board, um, your, your appointment in the, in the job, players' reaction to that, and really buying into the the Leitrim County side and. I saw firsthand the numbers of training and the ad- application was phenomenal. COVID came and really for the last maybe 16 months, 15 months, it's been a real challenge for everybody in every walk of life, whether it's business, personal lives, whatever, uh, college, uh, you name it. We've all had to deal with different challenges. How has it been keeping yourself motivated, but also a group of girls when you don't really know when next Sunday's date was going to be until a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, I suppose uh, first and foremost, in terms of of, of Zoom, we, we kept quite a bit in contact with Zoom, and we done a bit of a bit of work on, on terms of the mindset and where we wanted to go, and and 
I suppose what we're trying to do is change the culture to a certain degree in the gym as well. So first and foremost, we had lots to work on over, over COVID. And um, it's not as if we, we kind of disappeared off the radar. We've we, we done lots of work in terms of, of, of talking and meeting and kept the thing going on. And I think with last year being so successful in terms of, of how well we were going, I think the girls realised that, listen, you know, if we could once get back into it, and I suppose with the shorter season and the shorter window now, that leaves everything a bit more, there's a bit more edge to it, there's a bit more excitement to it, and, and everything's a little bit more condensed, and, and even the club season is a lot more condensed. So everybody's just now at this stage um, looking forward to to getting out and champing up the bit to try and to uh, to move on, and more importantly, to progress on from, from where we were last year. And um, look, I've made this very clear on numerous occasions that the the ability and, and the talent in Eitrim is is unbelievable. It is it is probably the most underachieved county in terms of ability that I've ever seen. Their the potential is here in abundance. And I suppose it's just um success breeds success. And if we can get a little bit of success then, you know, we'll put ourselves back in the map and in terms of, of attracting other players out and, and things like that. So yeah, as I said, um, I, I can't complain that the gears that application to date has been absolutely brilliant. In terms of Sunday's game, uh, Louds in town, obviously you faced them in the league last year. How much about, about this year's squad are you familiar with? You, have you done your homework on uh, who is likely to be on the field for them on Sunday? Yeah, look, listen, um, I, I've done my homework the same way I, I try and do it for all teams. Um, and... Again, they're going to be, you know, realistically, probably the, the team debate in terms of of what they bring to the table. And um, they beat us last year by a point down in, in, in down in the peninsula. And I suppose what sticks in personally in, in my throat was that we underperformed. That they, I take any beating from any team, um, as long as we perform and perform as, as close to our ability as we can. But last year we didn't perform, and we and we left the result behind us. So this year is about, you know going out and, and, and trying to put um, a bit of consistency together and, and try and aim to perform at, at the highest possible standard that we can. And I think if we can do that, then the, we, we will beat Louth, um, you know, but we have to apply ourselves and we have to to make sure that we, we you know, get as close to that, that magic number as we possibly can. So in terms of Louth, you know, they're they're holding their own in intermediate um, in terms of the championship. They, they did look out of place in last year's championship, so they're a formidable team. So, But at the end of the day, look, for us to succeed as a county and, and individually grow and, and develop as players, we've got to compete and, and play these teams and the better teams. So, you know, it's it's in our best interest to to try and get to get out of Division 4. And, and to do that, we're going to have to beat Lowe's at least once, if, if, if not twice. And Hugh, I suppose a question I'd have for you, um, you're talking about championship and Louth's performance in the intermediate championship, you know the two championship games last season, you know against um, Down and Meath. How do you feel that um, helped the group? Um, obviously, the Meath game was a very difficult game for you, but you know do you feel the girls would have learned a lot from that game? Um, that standard, obviously, Meath are a very, very um, one of the one of the higher standard teams in it. You know, would they have learned a lot from that game as a young side? Oh, massively, and 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 you know what, we we still talk about them games in terms of training and, and how and me are are the pinnacle in terms of of what you really want to do and how you want to succeed in terms of their their organisation and um, in terms of their work rate, their work ethic, their 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 general skill levels. It was absolutely brilliant. We knew we were going to be up against a mammoth task last year in terms of of me, but it was a case of, of measuring exactly where we're at and and where we want to go, and we used that as a as a as a fantastic example. Down on the other hand, we were we were so close. Um, you know, we, we talked about uh, chances and, and, and things. We had three or four chances last year against Down, and unfortunately, um, and the other day of the week they would they would go in. So we're not overly that while far away. I, I, again, it boils no. down to I suppose the mindset and the culture and and you know this thing of I suppose other teams looking down on us in terms of you know we're Leitrim and we've been maybe commonly known as as a as a easier team or a team to that you could pick up points against or or or, or win against easily so we're just changing what we're um what we're about and all we have to do is look after ourselves in terms of worry about ourselves and if we apply ourselves the way that we can and we're well able to do it and, and we've done that the last two challenge games um they've come all massively and um you know as long as we continue to improve then then we'll be a match to anybody on our day especially at the intermediate level 
Listen, Hugh, the very, very best of luck to you and the girls in Ballinamore, two o'clock on Sunday. Uh, the game, we expect it to be streamed. Uh, details we don't quite have to hand as we record this, but I'm sure if they check out uh, Leitrim LGFA on all the social medias, Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, uh, they'll find out the details of where they can watch that game. Obviously, people not allowed in, same as all the other games this weekend. Hugh, thanks very much for joining us. Best of luck on Sunday. Thanks, Hugh. Best well, of luck to you. Thanks. Thanks a million, guys. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. So Hugh Donnelly there, looking forward to getting his league campaign and the ladies' league campaign on Sunday afternoon in Ballinamore at 2pm. Of course, the hurlers in action in Brewster Park and Skill, and at the same time against Fermanagh, their second round game in Division 3B of the National Hurling League, while the men's footballers, they take to Park Sean 3pm on Sunday afternoon and they allowed loud also the visitors on that instance it's a little bit disappointing aiden from a logistics point of view that we've waited so long to get games and not all three of them clash you couldn't get even if you wanted to not that people can get to games but in terms of streaming them or watching them um you kind of got to make a choice and, and go with one you don't have the option to, to yeah. really watch more than one I suppose it is strange, but I suppose, I suppose, briefly, there is a disconnect sometimes between some of the associations as regards, you know, the fixturing. And I know particularly with the ladies, um, you know, been familiar with it here in Sligo and that, you know, fixturing is a, is a, is a problem in, by and large, you know, um, as regards the groups, um, the heads speaking to each other, you know. So I'm not surprised by it um, that it's happened, but it's just something that we probably could sort out, you know, because the ladies GEA, is an integral part of, of of what we're trying to do, um, and I see even even in some areas here in Sligo, like you know, even to plan games and know when the girls' games are on and all that kind of stuff is it's it's kind of you know two separate entities walking away, which is you know strange and it's it's disappointing, yeah, for for, for you know, people that would watch the three games, you know. Well, from my point of view, the first game on on Saturday in the National League across the board starts at three o'clock. The last one at seven. And then there's a couple of different start times on Sunday. And there's no reason why hurlers couldn't be Saturday, footballers Sunday, put the ladies in at a time around that. Uh, they're well used to being moved around in terms of weird times. It's just, yeah. I find it very frustrating. In a time of streaming, where everything has to be accessed via uh, your phone or your computer, that they can't just make it accessible to everybody, no matter who you are or where you are. So from a media point of view, we'd like to be able to cover all of these games and I physically haven't worked out how to make three of me and put me in three different locations at the same time. But that's a me problem. Um, it, but it's just one of those things that just, it's a bugbear. I can't understand it. it. happens across the board within individual sports as well. Anyway, I, I digress. Let's get back to the football. Uh, we have, of course, Loud, Mickey Hart in town. Uh, will there be much attention on the fact that Mickey Hart is coming to, to Carrick, even though there'll be nobody really in the ground to... To take a look at it. Ah, there will, of course, sir. Like Mickey Hart, you know, I suppose, like one of the outstanding managers of our generation, um, you know, for his, his celebrity status in the game, and rightly so. And friendly coming down with Louth here, it's a very interesting, um, you know, sideshow from the point of, we've, of us playing Louth a couple of years ago or in the last campaign and been very successful down there, you know, and having lost in Marfix Park at the weekend. We're trying to figure out now, you know, can 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 Leitrim take take Louth? Where allow that? And there's no doubt about it. Um, Terry Highland would be very wary of the Mickey Hart factor. In terms of the weekend, this was I won't ask you to call the hurlers of the ladies footballers because the knowledge might be quite there to make an educated decision on that. But the footballers, Louth in town, can we get two points? Get our season up and running? Absolutely. Oh, there's no doubt about it. Um, you know, speaking to Dara Rooney there, you know, super game yesterday from Dara. And, you know, all the right noises are coming out of the room, you know, from what, you want, what you'd expect to hear from a team that, you know, they're very disappointed to have lost. They're disappointed at their performance. You know, they're not blaming anything else. You know, they're, they're obviously, you know, pointing to the sending off, but they're not blaming it for their, you know, for their demise. So I suppose from a point of view of to hear Dara's confidence there, you know, that they were expecting to win their three games. You know, that's that's probably what we would have expected from from the Leitrim dressing room at this stage, you know, having been in Division 3 and that kind of stuff. So, look at it, We went in and hope um, last Sunday in the Mavericks Park. You know, expectation more than hope, to be fair. Um, you know, that was dampened. So now we're out next Sunday um, in expectation again, I would think, because, like, what can Louth have done in the interim 
with the players that they had the last time we played them, bar the Mickey Hart factor. So, you know, are they going to be fitter, stronger, faster? Possibly. Um, you know, we're seeing that at the moment. Teams coming back in, in super condition, you know, some better than others. So I suppose Terry Hedlund is strict this week is to figure out, you know, fix the flaws from last week as best he can and try and get the shooting show the same up front. You know, the, sh- the shooting was fantastic last weekend. The 18 points was a very positive return. You know, I'm sure if if they look at the other end of the pitch and try to nail down some of the stuff that, that didn't work to plan um, and come up with a solution for that, I, I'd be very disappointed if we don't get our two points on Sunday. And as I said earlier on, Bradford, this league is going to be wide open after Sunday because um, Sligo have a very difficult journey down to down to Belfast. Absolutely. Well, listen, um, head on the block, one word, who's going to win on Sunday in Park Sean? Oh, Leitrim, I would think. Excellent. Well, Aidan, thanks very much for joining me. Thanks also to our guests across the whole show, to David McGovern of the Hurlers, Dara Rooney, of the county football team and also the ladies football manager Hugh Donnelly. Don't forget, you can get your hands on the Leitrim GA Supporters Club tickets. Uh, they're all available on leitrimsupportersclub.ie and also that outside chance to win yourself a wedding. Uh, you could always have a, re- a renewal of your wedding vows, Aidan. What do you think? What should be up first? Well, I, I have three kids, Breffney. Uh, <laughs> and there's a possibility they might get married too. So I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's definitely something's going to happen, I'd imagine. So, yeah, we could put the put the put the twenty five grand on 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 ice for a couple of years. Well, listen, get yourself over to winawen.ie <laughs> and you might have a a very comfortable day out in uh, Lockerin Estate and Gardens in the coming years. And of course, that price is eligible until uh, January twenty twenty five. But there's a little asterisk there as well. I'm sure negotiations. <laughs> are possible on that. Aidan, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, to everybody who's watching, thank you very much for thanks sticking perfect. with us for the last hour or so. Uh, don't forget, you can follow the show anywhere you want on Leitrim GA's platform, Leitrim Daily, and of course, on Final Whistle as well. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. I do recommend Spotify. It's probably the easiest place to get us week in, week out. It'll come straight into your phone. Uh, talk to you again next week when I'll be joined by a former teammate of Aidan's, Colin Regan.